Good morning, and are we enjoying the cool? Yes. yes. And thank you, Brian. That was lovely. The, the grumbling of the religious leaders in today's gospel is actually our holy hope and our only hope. This Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. That our God seeks and saves the last not only is a hope, it is our only hope. As the writer of 1 Timothy reminds us, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join us for the opening hymn. Psalm 51 uh, responsively, and just as a side note, this was my mother's favorite psalm. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Because my sin... Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Blessed be the whole Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Together we acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does.
God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin ha still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love, kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and are made whole. God points the way to a new life in Christ and meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, I've heard this a million times. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading comes to us from Exodus 32, 7 to 14. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are, our, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses employed, implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord, the word of life. Thanks be to
Join me in the prayer of the day. O oh God, over, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'm sorry, Sandy. I you can't be 12 places at once? <laughs> the second reading today is from 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord, the word of life. Thanks. It is now time to welcome our neighbors and friends gathered here. So please pass the peace in whatever way is comfortable to you. The peace of the Lord be with you. It's so hard not to follow the rule of three. <laughs> please join me in the gospel acclamation and please stand. gospel comes to us from Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So they he told them this parable. 
Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness to go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together all his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, over, uh, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep who was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what of the woman having ten silver coins? If she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice for me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Redemption, circles, and cycles. The synonyms for redemption are very interesting when listed. Vindication, absolution, clearing or satisfying a debt, retrieving, recovery, rescue, return, conversion, squaring, exchanging, making good, honoring an obligation. Think of these words as a circle. Something was had, was lost, some action was taken to retrieve it, and then there was the joy of getting it back. So then, have you ever thought of Christian redemption as a circular concept? I didn't until I read and thought about these texts together. The readings describe actions and situations repeated over and over. I saw circles and cycles. God's creation has circles and cycles, life and death, daylight and nighttime, seasons, the bottom of a pine cone or of a seashell, flowers, vegetables, fruits. Then there are the human imitations of God's creation, tires, glasses, canned goods, records, CDs, DVDs. The readings for today tell a story. It is, it is a story of man's circular or cyclical relationship with God our Father. The story of Moses begins with him defending the very naughty and stiff-necked Israelites. Every time I read or hear these words and verses, I'm appalled for the Israelites' lack of gratitude. I am at the same time awed by God's never-ending forgiveness. And I cringe to think of Moses' audacity to argue with God. He reminds God of his promise. I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all the land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. Gutsy guy, that Moses. His bargaining chip is his reminder to God of God's great power and mighty hand. He exalts God and illustrates for him that in showing his mercy for his beloved and chosen people, he is again supreme over the Egyptians who would in their wrath have chosen a different path. A mortal man prompting God. The Lord of all, in his love and mercy, changes his mind and cancels the planned disaster. He is a God of everlasting patience and mercy. There is confession and repentance on the part of Moses, and forgiveness and redemption and, uh, of the relationship on the part of God, the circle. Next in the story is Paul's ex explanation 
of the forgiveness shown him by Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul's life before his conversion was not great. In his words, he was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. Paul confesses and repents. He then takes to heart the grace of our Lord. He claims the faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. All of that shows, allows Paul to travel the known world proclaiming God's mercy and love. Wherever he went, he started churches. He recruited leaders like Timothy and Titus to continue his missionary work, making Christ known throughout the world. Paul the unbe unbeliever, Paul the sinner, Paul the repentant, faithful servant, God the merciful, Paul the redeemed, the circle. The final chapter in our story includes two of Jesus' parables. Again, I see the circle. The shepherd has lost a single sheep from his fold of 100 sheep. Using our metaphor, the sheep has sinned and separated itself from the love and protection of the shepherd. But the shepherd, out of love, drops everything to find the lost sheep. He forgives the sheep laying it on his shoulders and rejoicing, bringing it back to the fold, back to his mercy and protection. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The sinner, the repentant, the forgiveness, and the redemption. How great is God's patience for the repeating pattern, the circle. The second parable about the lost coin teaches, touches my heart as I picture an old woman desperately looking for her lost coin. The lost, the sinner, the found, the redeemed. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The circle. There is one downer note in this analogy. The circle implies that it will be repeated, and unfortunately, it will be. In this fallen world we live in, sin is expected, probable, predicted. That being said and acknowledged, we have this magnificent privilege of confession, and in God's unbounding mercy, we have forgiveness and redemption, the circle. Finally, we must remember, above all things, how this circle of forgiveness and redemption comes about. Christ Jesus took our sins with him to the cross so that the last part of the circle, the forgiveness and the redemption, can take place. He did it once and for all, for our sins of yesterday, today, and unfortunately, tomorrow. We are the impatient, whiny Israelites. We the, are the ignorant, persecuting Pharisee. We are the lost sheep and the lost coin. But we have our Savior Jesus the Christ, who erased the impatient, the whiny, the persecuting, the lost. The circle was completed in his death and resurrection. Praise be to God. Alleluia. Amen. A postscript. Today, as you know, is September 11th, or, it has, or as it has come to be known, 9-11. Let us honor in our hearts and remember those who died that day in the planes, in the buildings, in trying to save their fellow citizens. It was and is a tragic and horrible day in the history of our, of our country. Let us never forget. Let us each teach our children the lessons of this tragedy. Let us all pray for peace. Please pray with me. Everlasting and faithful God, we thank and praise you for the gift of your son who completed the circle for us, who allows us time and again to come before you in repentance, knowing in confession that our sins are forgiven 
and forgotten, and our damaged relationship with you is repaired. All glory and majesty and honor are yours. We pray in the almighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. So please join me in the hymn of, of the day. The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, one of my favorites. Please join me in declaring the tenets of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, 
So let us gather our prayers for the church, for those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy, and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, hear our prayer. As the seasons change, renew us in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. God of that all may share. God of grace, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom in our elected, elected leaders so that we may know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You'll, your children wander homeless and, hungry, and, and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost, lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addictions or illness. Provide for those in any need. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, our feet, our voices, our minds, and our hearts. Build up the ministries of this congregation. Our sister parish in Rwanda, ADCA, Foothill Pregnancy Center, and all the other groups that our noisy offerings help each month. And help us to serve our neighbors and welcome the strangers in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of the mosquito fire. We are grateful for all those who, who work to put out the fire, or who are working to put out the fire. Pour your blessings on all those in involved. God of grace, hear our prayers. please offer here your prayers, either aloud or in your heart. Pray for all caregivers as they, in your name, care for those who are ill or are in trouble in some way. Give them strength and courage and your blessings. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We now give to God what was first given up, given to us. Please sing with me the doxology. Praise God. Pray with me the offering prayer. Gracious God, in your great love, you really provide all our needs. May you take these gifts of banquet and blessing and make them ready to share with all who need them. Through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all of us. The Lord be with you. And the 
indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all choirs of angels and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. gave thanks and gave it to all for all to drink, saying, This is the covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we share this meal, we remember our Lord until he comes again. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your, for your journey. Join me in the communion song, please.
God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we have a temple talk this morning. Greetings. I bring you good news. Our uh, efforts on the behalf of Ukraine have been very successful. And to date, we have contacted and are partners with nine, uh, 10 organizations or churches. And all the churches have received bags of uh, ribbons and they're uh, distributing them through their churches. And the Boy Scouts have been very, very good at the last uh, pancake breakfast about helping us uh, distribute uh, ribbons to over 100 people. And we're very grateful of this. In addition to that, we received great press coverage from Union Democrat and from the Enterprise on our efforts all these things have, in all these uh, notices and announcements, they have specifically mentioned the role of Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. Thank you very much. Thank you. Announcements and acknowledgements. Today is 9-11. It's also God's work, our hands. Uh, please stay for a few minutes after service to write cards for the armed forces. I will put them out on the tables, and I have also cheat sheets if you can't, if you just go totally blank. I don't know what to say. Um, and there are pens, and everything will be available in a few minutes. So get something to eat so you can eat and write, and that would be lovely. One card would be sufficient, but if you want to do more than that, that's great. We have a lot. And just so that you will know, I then gather these all up and don't, please don't seal it because uh, it has to go through whatever, has to go through. Um, and they don't want anything sealed because it'll be unsealed and read anyway. Um, and then I send them off as a packet and then they are distributed to the armed forces. And I try and uh, direct that they go overseas, but I'm not, can't guarantee that entirely. Uh, fellowship time. The congregation of Mountain Ranch Lutheran and Faith Lutheran have invited our com congregation to a hymn sing and potluck dinner on Saturday, September 24th. It will be held at Faith Lutheran, which is in Murphy's, uh, beginning with the song fest from 3.30 to 4.30, followed by a potluck meal. And I believe there's a sign-up sheet on, at the back for Emily. Absolutely. So are we signing up for what we're bringing or, and our favorite hymn? Yes. Okay. And also if you're driving. Oh, yes. So if we may share, we can ride share. Any questions about that? Um, Harvest Fest is at Ironstone uh, Viner Vi Winery, there's the word, is on October 2nd. There's a sign-up sheet in the back to sign up for that as well. Um, as Margaret mentioned in her prayers, B. McCamey, who's been a member, who was a member of this congregation forever and ever and ever, and Bible studies and everything, passed away last week. Uh, we ask the Lord be with her family and friends. Uh, thanks to Sandy. I'm sorry.
thanks to Sandy for everything, everything, everything she does, uh, to Clyde and Brian, thank you for the beautiful music, for Sharon, um, who uh, sets up the altar and the communion for us, um, and for Mike, and for Nancy, who is not with us today, but I hope is well, um, and for this lovely congregation. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and with peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Please join me in the sending him God bless America. Thank you, choir. Mm. Uh, go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.